Hey guys, what's up, what's going? My name is Robin. Welcome back once again for another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys my Canadian dividend based portfolio. And this video is really going to be geared at how to invest in the Canadian market and how to get started with investing if you are a complete beginner. So those of you who watch this channel have been around for quite a while, you guys know that I like to focus on the basics when it comes to investing and I really do a type of investing that's very fundamentally sound and very simple and that's the thing I think is really important and I think a lot of people, um, they try to overcomplicate things when it comes with investing or maybe they just get the wrong idea about it. So on this channel we're all about simplicity and I show you guys one of the easiest ways to invest long term into dividend stocks and basically what I've been doing on this channel is documenting my journey and sharing with you guys my results along the way. And my basic approach to investing is investing into good quality uh, long-term Canadian companies that have done well in the past and will probably do well going to the future. Um, so in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is we do a quick little update on the portfolio, guys. I'll show you guys how the portfolio is doing. And then we're going to jump inside the portfolio. I'll show you guys uh, how my stocks have performed um, since we first started the portfolio. And then I'll probably show you guys some stocks I'm going to be buying today. And then we'll finish up the video show showcasing you guys um, some of the dividend income that I made uh, from this portfolio as well as answer some questions that you guys have had on the channel. So um, if you guys are brand new to the channel, be sure to check out the links in the description. There's some affiliate links for Wealth Stable Trade if you guys want to get set up with that. But other than that, let's jump inside the portfolio and let's see how our stocks have been performing. All right, guys. So like usual, the first thing I'm going to do is a quick little portfolio recap and I'll show you guys how everything has been doing. And it's pretty cool to see some of you guys leave comments, um, especially for a lot of people who are new to the whole idea of like long term you know, investing and stuff like that. It's cool to see some of you guys realize that, you know, how, how things grow over time and how our portfolio has actually been doing quite well um, since we first started investing back in January of 2020. So the portfolio is roughly about a year old, maybe like 13, 14 months, I guess, or approaching um, March. So that would put it kind of in that 13, 14 months range. Um, so, you know, the portfolio is steadily growing. And over the past day here since this morning, um, the stock market opened up quite decently well, up $80, um, which is about zero, a little bit over 0% here inside the portfolio. If you go over one week, our portfolio is up 2%, so a nice little increase over the past week. I think most of that actually coming from the Canadian stock market. And over the past month, we were up 4%, it's so about $800. So once again, guys, you know, our portfolio isn't super big. It's a decent chunk and it is getting there. I mean, it's $21,000 um, at the beginning of 2020, where you literally started from zero. So it is getting there, um, but we're still getting some decent gains over the past three months we're up six percent which is twelve hundred dollars that's where you can start to see some of that uh some of the big gains inside the portfolio and then over the past year we are up ten percent i think it's the first time we've actually been up ten percent inside the portfolio um and all time once again ten percent which is about one thousand nine hundred and two it's almost two thousand dollars the portfolio is up um so it's doing quite well and i just want to say a big thank you to everybody who supports the channel because you guys have really helped me out um and how, helping fund this portfolio and keep it going kind of thing so i, I definitely really owe you guys for that um and going down here I'll zoom in here, in here so you guys can see. I'll do a quick little recap on some of the stocks that I hold. And some people have been asking because I've, I know there's been a lot of interest um, from beginners about the stock market and whatnot um, when it comes to picking beginner stocks. I'm going to give you guys a big tip here really quick. Um, any of these stocks that hold my portfolio are good beginner-based stocks. But if you guys want to kind of um, pick your in own individual stocks and kind of get started, look at some popular ETFs, look at the, at the stocks they hold, and kind of go from there. So if I bring up VDY, which is the ETF I have, um, you can go on their Vanguard page you can look at their holdings and any of these companies like you see that are like at the top like rbc td embridge bank of nova scotia you know tc energy corp manulife bell um, you know all these different companies these are all good solid companies they're in here for a reason because they're good companies so if you're looking for beginner companies to kind of take a peek at some to kind of maybe consider check out these companies and you can kind of look at some etfs to get an idea or you can just buy the etf uh, yourself or do a combination of the two which is kind of what i do um so uh, once again let's go through some of these stocks really quickly so the first one we have is algonquin power utilities corp uh, we are currently down negative seven percent um, but this is a pretty good power utilities company we've invested into a regular basis next up we have is bip um, this is a stock i bought recently looking to build some infrastructure into the portfolio uh, it's canadian based currently at about zero percent all time Next up, we have a CNR, which is Canadian National Railway. Really good growth, um, really good growth uh, stock and dividend stock. We're currently about sitting about zero percent. Enbridge we have here, which has actually done quite well recently. I don't have any shares of Enbridge because we hold it in our ETFs. Um, so I, I kind of bought it in the beginning um, when I first started this portfolio, but I didn't really need to buy it because it's already one of the big players in ETF, and I don't really want to add more inside the portfolio. But nonetheless, it is up ten percent, so it's doing pretty good. Um, going down here, we have Fortis, which is now negative 6%. Once again, another good um, utility-based company. I, I kind of do have quite a bit of them, so I'm looking to diversify in the future. Next up, we have H&R REIT, which is a, a REIT I've been buying back in the day. 
and REITs are in an interesting spot. Like, like once again, you know, they're they're down quite a bit, but they do have some big potential. I'll be talking about REITs a little bit later on uh, today once we go over some stocks. Um, Manulife Corp is up 16%. This has been a pretty good financial stock for me. Really good company. Next up, we have is RealCan up 8%. Actually, nice little increase over the past little while. We have Trans Ultra Renewables up 18 or 19%. Um, renewable companies seem to be performing pretty good. Trans Ultra Renewables doing well. Um, Severia Corp, a healthcare accessibility company, up 19%. Um, once again, not too big holding inside the portfolio, but is doing okay. Then we have Shower Communications, which we bought like way back in the day and kind of just holding it for now to see what it does. And then we have Telus um, TD, which is actually up 17%. TD had a huge increase here, as you guys can see here. I think the Canadian stock market must have went up over the past couple of days or so because it's actually doing pretty well at 17%. And we can see VDY is actually at 12%. So once again, our Canadian stocks are doing really well, up almost 12%. And then VFV, which is our US-based stocks, is currently at about 2%. So it actually went down quite a bit. Uh, which brings me to my next point. Um, we mostly focused on ETFs, as you guys can see here, the biggest holdings of the two ETFs. So in today's video, the one stock I want to talk about, it's actually some REITs because REITs are in a very interesting spot. And I think they're they have potential, right? But they're also in a tough, some of them, depending on which ones. But I think if you're going to invest in Canadian REITs, I think RealCan is probably one of the better ones because they're just a big company. Like they have billions of dollars in assets. They have tons of free cash flow. Um, they're really in a good position, I think, to recover um, when the recovery kind of happens. And, and with, you know, the vaccines and everything opening up again, we've kind of seen that once again, that trend towards these the, the REITs going back up and just the overall market going back up. So over the past day, RealCan is up 1%. Over the past week, it's up 4%. Over the past month, it is up 8%. Over the past three months, it's kind of like, kind of went down a bit. So it's kind of in the middle. But if we go, if we go over the past year or so, we can see that it's still down 30%. So I've been buying real can ever since the pandemic basically happened. And you guys can see here that once things kind of started to open up, it, it kind of went up and then it went back down and then went up, went back down. But as things are trending upwards, we can see the stock growing and we're already at a 9% return, which so, so I think real can is it's a good way to diversify. I don't have a lot of REITs inside the portfolio other than the two I talked about already. So in today's video, I am going to be buying real can because I still think there's lots of growth. I still think it's undervalued and I do think REITs will recover. And when they do, I think real can will do quite well. It's just a question of, you know, is it going to be over the next couple months? Is it going to be over the next year? Or is it going to be over the next couple years? But I think nonetheless, it's a pretty decent investment. And I'm going to put a little bit of money of my portfolio inside real can. So I'm going to buy about $100 worth of real can today. That's going to be my um, major buy here. Um, let me just go here inside the TFSA. There we go. Looks like uh, Wealth Simple Trade has some new... Um, um, some new information about different buys and whatnot. It's kind of cool actually to educate people on that. Um, probably get people get confused with market market buys and limit buys. I know I definitely did in the beginning. Uh, but anyways, if you go back inside the portfolio, we'll go back up here. Um, we see I have $185. And I was actually looking at some of the ETFs. You guys know me, I always pick ETFs and then I pick individual stocks to kind of just balance things out. And with the US market actually down quite a bit, I think it's probably a good time to buy. We're down 1.8% in the past week. Over the past month, it's actually down a little bit, um, which is rare because this ETF kind of just generally just slowly grows over time. So I'm definitely going to buy a couple shares of, I think I'm going to buy about two shares of VFV um, and let's see if that order will go through here. And I think that's a pretty good way to end the video um, in terms of what I'm buying today um, because with the US market down, I think it's a good time to buy. And with some of these can other Canadian stocks, you know, kind of doing well, I think it's good to buy some of them as well. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the portfolio and it's cool to see how things are going. Um, so before we end this video, let's take a quick peek at the dividend income. I'll give you guys a quick little update for you guys who are new to the channel, um, you know, how the portfolio has basically been doing since we first started investing. All right, so here's the good old fashioned dividend income spreadsheet that I made. Um, way back in January of 2020, which was our first month with the dividend investing case study. Basically, it was a way for me to track our dividend earns that we made throughout the um, portfolio. And as you guys can see here, you know, it was a couple bucks at a time. And this is just a cool little psychological way for me to kind of keep my head going because, you know, with dividend investing, investing into these these like longer term growth stocks, you don't see the growth initially. Fast forward a year, you know, one year from now, where the portfolio is up 10%, which is pretty good growth. I'm pretty happy with that. But it has been slow along the way. And a lot for the good chunk of the year, it actually was down up, up, up and down quite a bit. So the dividends were a quick way for me to just mentally see that, hey, you know what, the portfolio is growing. We're getting income coming in. And as you guys can see over time, they just kept growing as we put more money inside the portfolio. So it's a cool little way. And I think that's the value of dividend income is it just feels good to get money. And it's a cool way to keep you pushing through when you're maybe you're going through like a pandemic or something, or if your stocks are down, it just makes you feel kind of good knowing that you're getting that money and you're reinvesting it and you're buying those stocks at a cheap price. 
Um, I think that's cool, really cool feeling here. You can see that the income just kept growing all the way up to January, which um, we finished January at $37 and February is currently finishing at $45 and March is coming up pretty soon as we are nearing the end of February. So pretty good income in general. I'm pretty happy with it. Total dividends is $337. But once again, as you guys can see, a lot of the portfolio growth comes from stock appreciation. If we're sitting up about $2,000, and only $300 is dividends, most of it's coming from stock appreciation. So I wanna make that you know, important to you guys when it comes to investing. Always consider growth stocks, always consider the, the idea that you know stock appreciation is important too alongside with dividends. I think a lot of people get kind of confused or they get narrow-minded where they just focus on the dividends, but really it's it's a combination of the two that's really important. So I hope that's, um, that, that you guys find that interesting. I hope you kind of guys kind of find this helpful as you do your own investing. All right, guys, so I hope you guys found this video um, very informative, informative if you are a beginner. Um, if you guys have any questions about you know stocks or getting started, please let me know. I know I didn't cover everything inside this video, but I, I have done a lot of videos on this channel that kind of talk about the different things and whatnot and what I kind of look for when it comes to investing. Um, so if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section. If you guys did enjoy this video, please sure to give it a big thumbs up and let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, have yourself a good week, and I'll see you guys later, and take care.